Hi, and welcome back to Free For All Friday on Focal Point After Talk. I am your congenial, convivial, and amiable host, Brian Fisher. A true patriot, the Bible in one hand, the Constitution in the other. That's the mark of a true patriot. That's how the Founding Fathers established this country, uh, with the Bible in one hand and the Constitution in the other. Now, um, you were talking to, to David Haney from, or Kevin Haney from uh, Baptist Church in Rio Rancho, New Mexico, about the Census Bureau. And remember, the only thing that they are authorized to do by the Constitution is get a head count for the purposes of representation in Congress. That's it. They're not authorized to collect any other data or ask any other questions than that. Now, maybe it's harmless. Maybe it's innocent. My point is they're not authorized by the Constitution to do it. We did not authorize them to ask us intrusive questions about our political views. They can ask us how many people live in your house. We gave them the authority to do that, and that is it. And that's every 10 years. Now, here's Kevin Haney. He's got these people coming to the door in 2013. The census, my friends, was in 2010. He's got people three years later from the census uh, agencies. Uh, so anyway, again, we want to be guided by the Constitution, and that's kind of why I make an issue out of that. One other issue, and I'm going to play a, a clip from Rick Santelli here. 888-589-8840, by the way. 888-589-8840 is the number. Remember, we had this story some time ago about how the Census Bureau cooked the numbers leading up to the 2012 election because the employment numbers were bad. By the way, do not let Obama lie to you. The unemployment rate is not 7%. The true unemployment rate is 11.5%. If you add in the people that have simply dropped out of the labor force because they got so discouraged, couldn't find a job, just quit looking, that's the true unemployment figure is 11.5%. So do not... Let them lie to you. They're going to be out there talking about the falling unemployment rate. This is terrific. This is fantastic. Isn't it wonderful that our president is turning things around so magically? He is not the true unemployment rate, 11.5%. Anyway, the unemployment number was bad in September of 2012. And no president has ever gotten elected with an unemployment rate over 8%. So there's this tremendous incentive to get the unemployment rate down below 8%. And the Census Bureau cooperated by inventing people and giving them jobs. I kid you not. We gave you that story. They made people up. They invented interviews with people. If they couldn't get hold of somebody at an address, they just made up somebody. They invented jobs for them, and they entered that information in the computer. And voila, the unemployment rate in October drops to 7.9%. So this, this is an illegitimate election, ladies and gentlemen. Rick Santelli of, of uh, MS, or CNBC talking about this. Let's listen. Rick Santelli talking about that fake census data and unemployment numbers. You know, there's a lot of reports out that the census group that's involved in phone surveys, which are part of the household survey, which determines the unemployment rate, well, some of those may have been fake. Now, of course, this is the beginning, and I'm sure investigations will ensue, but it really does raise a very large question. And many question some of the data points before the election. Myself, Jack Welsh, and by the way, Jack, happy birthday. It's Jack's birthday today. But let's play a clip when I was losing most of my temper, but things just didn't feel right. Listen to this sound bite. There was no doubt in my mind a month ago it would be under 8%. There was no doubt in my mind five minutes before the number would be under 8%. Take it any way you want. No, I can't take it any way. <laughs> you know, the now, the rest of it, he says, maybe I should have said that in a more calm uh, fashion. But he says this, this had a determinative effect on the outcome of that election. The economy, the unemployment rate was huge. It was all about jobs, jobs, jobs. And he said he had a gut instinct that these numbers had been monkeyed with, that they were phony. This unemployment rate, this dramatic decrease in the unemployment rate was phony. And it turns out he was exactly right. Now, you know, we've made the comment. Let's go back to clip number eight, the Chris Matthews clip, another excerpt from Chris Matthews' interview with Barack Obama. You know, and we've made the point that politics for liberals is a religion. It's a religion for them. You know, God, the scriptures, Christianity, that is our religion, if you want to use that term. But for liberals, for secular theocrats that reject the Bible, that reject the Judeo-Christian tradition, 
that reject Jesus Christ, that reject the revelation of the Word of God, that creates a spiritual vacuum for them. There's a vacuum there. There's a void at the center of their being, and something is going to fill that. There is going to be some idol. If Christ is not your God, if that's not who you worship, you are going to worship something or someone else. Nature abhors a vacuum. If you deliberately reject Christ, you leave him standing out in the hallway knocking at the door, and you don't let him in, it's going to create a vacuum at the core of your being, and something else is going to get sucked in to that vacuum. And for liberals, for secular theocrats, what gets sucked into that vacuum is government. Government is their God. Government is what they worship. Government is whom they worship. Government is the solution. If you have a problem, you don't go to God. You go to government. The solution is not prayer and fellowship and self-reliance. The solution is a government program. So whether you know, they won't say that government is their God, but you and I know better. That's who they worship. Where do people turn when they've got a problem that needs solving? We turn to God. They turn to government. And if you've got a religion, it's got to have a Messiah. I mean, Allah has got to have Muhammad, and God the Father has got to have Jesus Christ. So who do liberals, if government is their God, who is their incarnate Messiah? Listen to Chris Matthews after his interview with Barack Obama last night. We are a president who remains frustrated with the political and media culture that he has to work within, and that he really is looking to rally people, students here, right, and supporters, case, and people within the media. But David Corn, you skeptic. He came to us today. I know, which is what he he's trying to do. He came he's trying to rally. I want you to listen to that again. Emily, recue that thing, because it's a little bit hard to hear what he says at the end. I'm going to tell you what he said, and you can listen to it and hear it again for yourself. He refers to David Corn, who writes for Mother Jones, which, by the way, big advocate for raising the minimum wage, and they don't pay their interns anything. They tell their interns, go get on food stamps. So, and the same thing is true with, with Organizing for America, Barack Obama's uh, activist outfit. They're out there campaigning for a raise in the minimum wage, and they don't pay their interns anything either. Zip, zero, nada. So Mother Jones out there, they want to raise the minimum wage. They don't pay their interns a dime. Tell them to go on food stamps. Organizing for America, Obama's activist group. They want to raise the minimum wage. They're sending volunteers 15 to 40 hours a week out there knocking on doors. Raise the minimum wage. Raise the minimum wage because it's a morally right thing to do. They don't pay those people anything. Nothing. Zip. Nada. Zero. But anyway, Chris Matthews refers to David Korn as a skeptic. Like you and I would refer to an atheist as a skeptic about Christianity. He says, look, David Korn, you have a skepticism about our religion and about our God. And he says about Messiah, uh, about, about Obama, he came to us today. He came amongst us. Did you get that? He came to us today. He came amongst us. He walked among us. Um, amongst us. Not even among us. It's amongst, like a biblical word. He came amongst us. You know, it reminds me of that verse that's, that's inspired our Christmas buttons at AFA this year. Uh, uh, on those who walked in darkness, a light has dawned. I mean, that's kind of it's a biblical imagery that Chris Matthews is invoking. So I want you to listen to this soundbite again, particularly what he says at the end. David Korn, Mother Jones, Liberal Magazine, talking to Chris Matthews. We are a president who remains frustrated with the political and media culture that he has to work within, and that he really is looking to rally people, students here, right, and supporters, case, and people within the media. But David Korn, you skeptic. He came to us today. I know, which is what he he's trying to do. He came he's amongst trying to us. Rally. He came amongst us. Oh, man. So there is, uh, as far as Chris Matthews is concerned, Barack Obama is the incarnate Messiah of the government of religion. Now, uh, 888-589-8840, number to call, 888-589-8840, if you want to join the uh, conversation. Let's grab clip number nine, George Will. Now, remember, young people, I mentioned this before, 40% of all of the signees under Obamacare that buy insurance through Obamacare have got to be under the age of 35. It is the only way this thing will work. They've got to have 40% of the people that buy insurance have got to be people that don't need insurance, that don't use insurance, so that most of their premiums can be siphoned off out of their wallets and sent to older people who have higher health care needs. That's the only way this thing can work. It's this massive redistribution of wealth from the young and the poor to the old and the rich. You've never seen, I mean, this is, 
This is Robin Hood ripping off the young and ripping off the poor to give money to the old and the rich. It's reverse Robin Hood. I mean, this is rip. I mean, this is crazy. And, and no wonder young people are not going for this thing. You know, 29% of them said no interest in signing up for Obamacare. They know that they are getting ripped off. They know that they are being taken to the cleaners by Obamacare. So here's George Will talking about what it would take for young people to sign up for Obamacare. Let's listen. The problem is they're now going into full court press of millennials who are also called invincibles because they don't realize they're going to get old, sick, and with aches and pains. They need about 40% of those signing up to be under 35. Now, they're either going to sign up because out of altruism, they want to subsidize the elderly. Good luck with that. Or they're going to sign up because they don't know any better. The problem is Obamacare occurs in a context with young people. They're graduating from college, those who are, a great many of them into a job market that is unsatisfying, and they're graduating with federal student debt that they got because the Obama administration, with a flood of subsidies, caused the colleges to raise tuitions to capture the subsidies, and now they're coming out with this debt, and the, they're greeted by the Obama administration, congratulations, you've got your degree, buy some insurance you don't want at a price you can't afford, and it's just not promising. So George Will saying, look, uh, this is not going to work. And, and what they call it in the health insurance industry is a death spiral. In other words, what happens if you don't have enough young, healthy people that really don't need health insurance, if you don't have enough of them signing up and paying premiums that they don't use because they have very few health needs, if, if they don't sign up, then the only people that are signing up for health insurance are needy, sick people who are going to bleed you dry. And that means you've got to boost the premium rates to be able to satisfy all of the claims against health insurance because you don't have enough young, healthy people that don't need insurance paying into the system. That's a death spiral. And then as the insurance premiums go up, the more younger, healthy people drop out because the premiums are going up and they say, I don't need this, I can't afford it, and I don't need it. I'm just not even going to participate. Then you've got to jack up the premium rates even higher on the sick people that are using the system, and it's a death spiral eventually becomes unsustainable, and you simply go out of business. That's where we are headed. Uh, Focal Point, AFR Talk, we'll be right back. Stay with us, 888-589-8840.